all of us know what we respond to and we know what turns us off. And if we kind of learn from that and, and we engage people in dialogue and treat them like they're a part of the system and treat them like they have a brain and, you know, encourage them to, to talk and speak and have ideas, you know, and if we do it slowly, I mean, I don't think we caught up to what we should have been doing quick enough this time around, but I think we can use those same tools and move forward because, you know, I got depressed, but the presidency isn't the prize. If you think about it, you know, they don't do that much. They're the commander in chief. But, you know, maybe we, like, you know, put people in that we think should be there. Maybe we do like the Tea Party did, but not allow ourselves to be co opted. I, I agree with that. I just like yeah. to add, I think, um, what was I going to say? Just, damn it. <laughs> no, I think a big reason why they're trying to shut down the Internet is if you look at, obviously, you know, a lot of people get their news from there, and it's not propaganda like you alluded to, but they're trying to shut the youth down. Because I think from here on in, every generation is going to slowly gravitate towards upside. And I think if they think if they put the stop to the Internet, that they, they might be able to just only be able to feed them whatever they want, and maybe they think they can reverse the tide that way. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I agree that that's why they want to stop it, yeah. I mean, that's why they, they well, the two, two bills they've tried to, the SOPA on, uh, what was the other one? The Internet the same SOPA, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they've already, I mean, they're trying pretty hard to, they're pushing them a little hard, and they're just trying to, you know, catch the public sleeping, and hopefully they, you know, they don't. But see, uh, here's, okay, I'm, yeah, like, no, I'm no, going to no, monopolize this <laughs> Uh huh. Max made a point. He he texted me before, and he said about co-opting. Um, yeah. You got you guys are talking about them shutting it down by controlling the internet, but I think he's talk, talking about more, you know, someone getting in and getting control of you know the liberty movement, whatever you want to call it, and not pushing it, not totally turning it around but veering it in the direction that they want it to go. Um, I, I think mean, that's like a they danger. did with the Tea Party. Yeah, I mean, exactly. But, I mean, exactly. but the cool thing is that they did it to them first. So, so you kind of know, you know, that beware Greeks bearing gifts. You know, you, you know that, you know, well, you can't have this kind of support. It has to stay, you know, at, at this, this lower level. You can't have a big sponsor. I mean, I know it sounds nice, but, you know, that's the key. I mean, there's a catch... To, to everything, you know, I mean, they, they, they use that, and, you know, they're, they're very smart, and I, I think that, um, you know, uh, how they co-opt is, it's when people start to become compromised. I've said this so many times on there, and people say, oh, you know, you guys are never going to get anywhere because, you know, you won't compromise. Well, but as soon as you compromise, you become one of them. Yeah, you know? compromise is not an option. For sure. You know, you just become compromised after that. And then after the, after it happens one time, you know, I'm going to compare it to, to, to virginity, but, you know, it's like it's very few people go back from that. You know, once you do it once, you're just going to keep doing it, you know. And once you, you accept a bribe, once you compromise for something, once you do this one time, it becomes easier the next time and the next time. And so, you know, we have to we have to be that group of people that say, you know, our ideas are better. Our ideas are worth more than getting ahead, and and maybe we'll be slow, but you know, but not compromise, not vote for the Romney, to not say, well, you know what, we'll join the Republicans, you know, just so we can get our ideas out there. It has to be, no, let's grow it, you know, let's let's not compromise, and you know, and and just push to maintain ourselves as authentic individuals and grassroots. I agree with that. That makes sense. That makes sense. Although, on the other hand, if, if there's no, yeah, I guess it depends what you mean by compromise. You said something about a bribe. That is a question. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I, well, a compromise. I, I guess from Rand Paul. <laughs> yeah, go on. Sorry. Well, I was going to say sometimes I I hear arguments between like anarchists and minarchists. And they get into yeah. heated debates about about 
um, essentially the existence of courts or the existence of police or the existence of a military. And yeah, I agree there's a disagreement there, but there's so many other hundreds of thousands of things that we agree on. Oh, we agree on We should compromise. Well, yeah, you know, I, I yeah. thought about this. I thought about I think, this too. You know, Kilgram. Um, I I forget what his real name. He told me one time. Um, he said to me, he goes, you know, you guys are so small. You should, you know, bunk up with the Green Party, which is is very different than what we want. You know, I mean, it's like you know the opposite side. But if we're talking in terms of compromise, I would rather compromise with them than with Republicans. Wow. Well, I said this in a, um, one of the threads of the uh, presidential debate. So we actually have more in, the Green, in common with the Green Party than we do these two big corporatist parties. I mean, at mm-hmm. least on civil liberties and the you know national security, we agree. It's the economic issues where we don't agree. But I mean, two out of three is better than zero out of three. Like what we got with these <laughs> two fucked up parties, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and, I don't and, and, and I guess huh? no, go ahead. No, I was listening to you. <laughs> oh, no, I'm saying I don't necessarily think that means we should stand together with them. But I don't think we should focus energies on, you know, I mean, honestly, like, I, if Joe Stein, for instance, did good in the election, I'd actually be pretty happy, but that doesn't mean I support her. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But we should focus our efforts on fighting these two fucked up corporatist, you know, mirror image parties as opposed to you know, infighting with, you know, anarchists or fighting with the Green Party. I mean, I think the sole purpose should be to get rid of these two. That, that should be the sole purpose at this point for any minor party, really. Um, if I can wait in for a second. I actually agree with that. Because um, to me, I'm not a very good speaker, so forgive me for that. But... Um, it's kind of like, okay, you brought up Rand Paul, so I'll bring him up again. I'm not entirely sure that he's been co-opted so much as it's just a strategy. Yeah, I, I know. Not... <laughs> yeah, I'm a little weird on that, too. I, if I'm not mistaken, he, 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 he officially supported Romney, right? Or am I mistaken? Yeah, but I almost think he's a sleeper. I, I kind of, like, would long shot on this. I, 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 sometimes I think he's a sleeper, that he's just saying that until he gets there. That's what I mean. Because Mm -hmm. that I've seen it, because I've been following him kind of, and the way that I've seen it happening is it seems more like he's that kind of sleeper agent type of thing, that basically he's ingraining himself in with the mainstream Republicans. So when 2016, or in the future, anytime, rolls around, and when he gets a shot, it'll be like he'll come out more like Ron Paul, like he's supposed to, but at the same time, he'll be mainstream Republicans will like him because they'll yeah. look back on that and say, "Well, he was playing with the team," and then he'll actually be able to get more support from the Republican Party and probably even win the nomination. And then See, normally you know, I, agree, I agree with that normally, but I do think that uh, special interests and the uh, big media are at least have that in the back of their mind. They might pull a switcheroo on that. And I don't think they'd fully get behind them like they would on Mitt Romney or something like that just for that purpose. They might not snuff them out totally like they did Ron Paul or even Gary Johnson, but I don't think you'd see the backing from, the, you know, the Republican Party or from the media. Mm-hmm. I, I think that'll always be in the back of my mind, hey, that's the kid. He could be he could be strewn around. He could be playing around just pretending he's like he's one of us. But then if he gets in the, you know, presidency, then he's just going to, to being like wrong, his father, wrong folks. So I'm not sure if they'll ever fully get behind them. Yeah, but see, that's the problem with the Republican philosophy, is that the Republican philosophy is everything's top down. Everything that happens, yeah. we need to do everything from the top, and then it'll eventually get down to us at the bottom. But what they don't understand is we don't work like that. I mean, we have for a while, but to that point where we're not going to work like that anymore. And if they keep underestimating the people and treating the people like they're a bunch of sheep that can be herded around, which in fairness, we have kind of let them do that, then eventually they're going to underestimate us. They're going to let someone like Rand Paul or just Sam Ash or one of them, hopefully I pronounced that right, rise up into the ranks, and then they're going to try to shut them down, and they're going to realize that they can't shut down someone people like anymore. 
especially when they've allowed them to get the chance to work. So, but I mean, yeah. Yeah. no, I, I, I agree with. I agree with you, and I, I think that you know the the people have to kind of send a message, and that's why maybe I've been so nasty about Mitt Romney because honestly, I don't, I don't dislike him more than I dislike Obama. I think they're pretty much the same. I dislike Republicans more uh-huh. than I because they pull this crap, and you know the the way that they shut down, you know, any kind of grassroots within their party. I think they need to lose. But but at the same time, there's this voice in the back of my head saying, the president's already picked. You know, the whoever you know the powers that be, whatever, you know, want to be president will will be president. You know, Stalin had said it's not he who who um, votes that counts, but he who counts the votes. And you know, I I think there's only so much that you can do at a presidential level. And that, you know, we really do need to get smart about trying to get people into um, the Congress um, to get them into state and local government. And in order to do that, we have to seem less scary. And I touched on this a little bit last night, but um, I went to an anti-war protest, you know, when I was at, when I was at Georgetown. And I'm there, you know, and I've got my... Uh, you know, my Georgetown Hoya sweatshirt on and, and, you know, and I've got a ponytail and, and, and I look normal. And, you know, at the time, you know, like my, my husband was in the military and, you know, and he went with me to make sure I was okay. And um, and the people came with cameras and they didn't want to talk to us because we looked so freaking normal. So they'd pass by and find the people with the nose rings and find the people that look like this and that. And it's not that, I mean, I would love to have a nose ring. You know, I can't do it with my job. I'd love to look, you know, as, as creative as I want to look. But... <laughs> You know, there's a certain level of strategy that I can't talk to my neighbors about minarchism or anarchism or anything like that um, if I look like, you know, I, I just stepped out of, you know, um, a goth conference or, you know, a fall I boy, you know, thing. Yeah. you know, I have to, I have to look a certain way. And, and yeah. in order to get this movement going, we have to sort of, not main, I don't, I don't mean mainstream, but we have to be not quite as scary. We have to be the neighbor next door. We have to be, you know, we have to be Ron Paul, that, that unassuming, aw shucks, you know, doctor from Texas. We, we have to be that guy. And, and you know, I, I think that would get us farther through it, it, than if we were to sit there with anarchy t-shirts and, and our combat boots and, you know, uh, riot girl clothing, you know? I agree with that. I, I think I agree. so. The problem is, is no matter how I, I, normal you look, like like a guy like you know Ron Paul looks perfectly fine. The mainstream media is still going to try to demonize someone like him or even the movement to make it look fringe. And for whatever reason, the people just gobble it up, and that's the problem. You know? There's well, not. I mean, I think we have to bypass the mainstream media altogether. I agree. I agree. But you also oh. have to you. You have to when you're in the position that we're in, where we have to get a toehold and to try to sort of peacefully, without aggression, motivate the country to come back. To be in that kind of position, we have to be doing it better than the other guy. We have to be as normal and nice and um, friendly as we can possibly be, and I know that I'm guilty sometimes of not being that. <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, yeah, I don't think any of us are. Yeah, for, <laughs> be honest. But I, you can't I, blame us, right? I, think the I mean, look what we have to deal with. <laughs> well, long shot is. I, I think the best chance that we as individuals have it to, to convert people to the ideas of liberty, like whether it's anarchism or minarchism, I think the best way is uh, one-on-one with people you know yep. and that respect you and know know who you are. Like I, yeah. I, I, you know, I probably say problem. on the internet, I've never, I've never no, converted ahead, anybody on the internet, but I've converted several friends of mine, like from the office yeah. and whatnot. You know, not fully, but I've gotten <laughs> complete Obama lefties to, hey, you want to take me shooting? You know, like that kind of thing. Um, yep, mm-hmm. and it's just by little dropping little things here and there just yeah very gently and not pushing. i actually think a big reason why our movement has 
recently in the past few years has nothing to do with us, to be honest with you. I think people are just waking up to a degree by saying how fucked up these other two parties are, and they increasingly and increasingly get worse. They might self-destruct on their own. You know what I mean? To be, yeah. I'm not saying we're not uh, in, we're not doing anything. Obviously, we're furthering it. We're helping it. But I think, you know, like all, like all those young people, you know, four years ago, Barack Obama thinking they were going to get, you know, he was going to, you know, pull out of the wars and he was going to come at the corporatism on Wall Street and he gets in and you know any of that shit. Now, some people, I mean, there are some people that are still totally in with him for whatever reason. I have no idea why. But there are some people that are, hey, this guy kind of sucks. You. you know what it's I mean? because they hate Republicans. It's not that they love Obama. It's that if yeah. they have to say Obama sucks, then they have to admit that, you know, it, it, it's, it's a game. It's, it's, they're just partisan. I, I was saying this last night to, to Max and, and read it's that I, I think that there's certain people and it sounds ugly that we just have to kind of like write off that you know they're yeah, they're lost to the matrix you know we're not getting them back and 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 long shot what is your real name or you don't have to tell me because it's podcast but um you know you're right it's, it's getting out there and, and talking to your neighbors and and being normal and you know, and, and I think that this was something actually that Obama did well in 2008 um, that we could learn from is all those house parties, you know, and you know, they did have, it got people in the living room and discussed, I, I never know if he was co-opted before or after by big business, but, you know, that was yeah. very smart. It got people together, you know, they were talking, and it, he really built a movement. And, I thought you know, the campaign was brilliant. I thought it was really yeah. the way he did it was brilliant, for sure. I mean, he had a lot of people fooled. I mean, there was some, like, you know, people who, even like, you know, 708, thought the whole system was bullshit, and they got the wool pulled over their eyes by Obama, you know what I mean? So he did a definitely yeah. a good job of presenting himself as something different from all the stuff that had been happening the years prior. But the problem is, the second the fucker got in, we all know what happened, you know? And... Yeah. There are some people, some Democrats, and you can even see on, and they're, I think they're a little better, at least on the forum we post them. You can get some of them that are like, yeah, the guy kind of like, cool again. You know what I mean? That's the problem. Mm-hmm. See, just like conservatives need to vote for an actual conservative like, you know, Gary Johnson or Ron Paul, I think liberals get the same problem. They're just sticking with Obama because they think he's the lesser of two evils too, where they should vote in who they believe in and vote for Joe Stott. So... There are some right. people that are just partisan hacks that no matter fucking what, they're going to pretend like, you know, they're, they're totally two different people, one and the same, and then there's going to be some people that think that it's a lesser two evils game, but they don't want the other guy getting in. And I think those are the people that we might be able to bring over to, you know, our side. And, you know, right. if you believe in, you know, liberalism, someone like Joe Stein, Stein's side. You know, and, there and are I, some people I that do... are stable. Yeah, no, I, I do. Yeah, I do agree. Though, I mean, I, I think that that Langstroth's absolutely right. I mean, we we have to get personal because you can't convert someone on the internet, um, and yeah. and that's that's true. I mean, you you can when you want to like get offline. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, like a, a couple of us. I mean, I, I, not so much you yet, Langstroth, but I'll, I'll do this to you in the future. But I mean, <laughs> um, you know, it's like Mike and I. Like, we start talking, and and I'm friends with like a shitload of people, even even Republicans, you know. And I thought, you know, gosh, if we all got together and we started talking, you know, we might be able to find those common points. And to a certain extent, we do have to use the Internet only in being able to organize and identify people and figure out a way of kind of like cells in a way is to find, you know, like Obama did with the House Party, sort of create these little community units. And get yeah. people into local government. Get oh, yeah. people into local government so that you start to yeah. so people start to say, you know what, that there's a libertarian over there, and they they did a really good job, and they were really great, and they were, you know, and and that's the huge problem kind of, is, is we don't we don't have money we don't have money like these people like the, the right and the left have. You know what I mean? It's going to be very hard to win seats in Congress when these people are spending millions upon millions of dollars and, 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 and have to spend. You know, in, a lot of times Senate, people vote but, for the dude they see on TV a hundred times, unfortunately, you know. Yeah, but Jimmy Carter, he went door to door, you know, to yeah. become president. I mean, he literally did. He, he went door to door. I'm Jimmy Carter. I want to be your yeah. president. I mean, he did it. And I think maybe not the Senate, 
but in the house you can. You know, like if, yeah. if, if you are that determined and you're like, you know, I want to meet people, I want, you know, and you yeah. start well before the election, not just that election year, I, I think it's possible. And I think that's the stuff that we have to do, you know, is to get into like, you know, mayors and, and um, you know, and, into local government and, and sort of try to, you know, to show that when we are in these positions, we don't go crazy and, in, in, yeah. you know, and, because I think the yeah. the fact that you know the word anarchy is used synonymous with chaos, yeah, is something to kind of get over. And so a lot of times I will say, well, I'm a minarchist because you know people don't understand that it doesn't have the negative connotations of saying, well, I'm an anarchist. Yeah, I'm a them, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, you, you, you I've, you, I've heard is uh, voluntarist. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Which isn't as scary yeah. as anarchist. Yeah. yeah. But, but Randy, one thing no, you were it. talking about the Internet, I, I agree with you um, that you're not going to convince a lot of people who have already made their, their mind up, but uh, the Internet is a great way um, to find libertarians. You know, they're out there. Yeah. They're out there looking for stuff. Or after mm -hmm. they, you know, a lot of people have a lot of questions and they show up on a board, and if you can make a, present a good case and they haven't already made up their mind, um, they're, looking, they're looking for answers. People are. Well, I'll say this. The, the Internet, internet has, is, is has helped to a degree. Like, I know you, you should be more personal, and I do agree with that. You should have things like house parties and, you know, talk to people individually. But I think may, maybe that will work better for, like, the older people. But I think a lot of the younger people have definitely been turned on to libertarianism, and I think a lot of that has to do with the Internet. You know what I mean? They, I don't think those type of people are as hard to coax into it. I think it's the older folks that you have a really hard time flipping, you know? And I think a lot of it is a lot of, you know, fear-mongering from the mainstream media that has made them scared, you know? When they think of libertarianism, they think, oh, my God, if I don't get my Social Security, I'm going to die, or if we pull out of these wars, we're going to get fucking nuked in three days, you know what I mean? Those are the people you got a hard time convincing because they Fed, fed with this propaganda for, I mean, if you're, let's say, theoretically, you're 60 years old, you know, four decades plus of your adult life, adult life fed, fed, fed yeah. this crap. It's almost impossible. Yeah, you're right. Even, you know, it's, it's, I mean, I know because there's some old people, that, you know, in the building I live in that, you know, I'm personable with, and one of them, I, you know, I try to get some cash on the side so I walk a dog, and... I just, yeah, you know, I spoke to her and I just tried to ease my way into it, but she's just terrified from it just because of the propaganda she's been fed for five decades. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and too, you know, I've I've noticed yeah, that. I mean, look at the military, like the young military compared to like, okay, you've got the. I'll just use posters just so we we kind of the type of person I'm talking about, but like the eighty deuce or um, you know the. Uh, you've got the Iron River, you know, the older military, they're solidly, solidly partisan Republicans, right? Yeah. You look at the young guys, like, you know, like my husband was, and um, like Ethereal and Blue Spade and Anecdote, and um, I'm trying to think of who all else was in the military. They're all either libertarian or anarchists. And yeah. the the young people in the military solidly voted Ron Paul, and there's a different mentality. And I started thinking about this, the um, Star Trek four, because I'm a big Star Trek fan. The whole um, only Nixon could go to China, like you know, they kept talking about that. And I think that to get conservatives to sort of listen to us. I think it would help to have like, former military because they still have that fraternity feeling to each other. Yeah. That once a Marine, always a Marine. Like, you know, to get somebody like, um, you know, Ethereal, for example, who's a former Marine, and get him to talk to Marines because they're still a fraternity and they like each other better than they like everybody else. You know, and, you know, it's like, I don't care how old they are if you say, oh, they're all like, oh, oh, you know, to each other. I mean, it's like they could be 80 and they're barking, you know, yeah. and, it, and you know, and they're also very hard because the Republicans built them up, like the military, they're the best, they're the most patriotic, they're this and that, and so they don't know what to do when these kids are like, hold on, you know, <laughs> no, it's not yeah, like yeah, yeah. because 
they have this knee jerk can't criticize the military because that's been the you know the Republican thing. And so I think if we got guys like that and said, you know, we need you to do more. <laughs> we need you to go out there and and you know and, and engage other conservatives because we can't yeah get anywhere on our own. We do need conservatives. I'm not saying we need Republicans, but we do need some of them to yeah. assist. Yeah. I think there's so, there's a lot of people on the Republican Party that are totally a lost cause. Like, in, any one of them who, you know, I mean, especially the Hawks, man, I think that that's a way. You're wasting your time with something like that. You know what I mean? I think in order for our movement to be uh, successful, we need to not only energize our base and grow our base, but we need to snatch from Republicans and Democrats who are not happy with the way the party is. They might not agree with us with everything, but a Democrat that wants to to get the fuck out of war. Maybe maybe he votes for a libertarian because these two aren't doing it for him. Or uh, someone on the Republican Party who's not happy with the way... I don't know. The economy's going. You know, you know and, and, and you know, so, carrying is the answer. So, he, so not only do we need to stand on the movement, we need to snatch people who might not agree with us, but they get set up to the point that they're like, you know what? I don't necessarily totally agree with these people, but these two parties ain't doing it for me at all. You know? Right. Right. They, well, and they so agree like, more like, on the margin with with us. Yeah. Well, and, and I wish Brandon was on. He said he was going to be on tonight. Um, but, um, too, he's, he's, he's there, for example, the, what? I am on. I'm right here. Oh, damn it. Why didn't you even say hi to me? <laughs> you honk. I'm going to kick you. Um, okay. So, like, you know, when you and I first met, like, I didn't know it to, met, you know what I mean, like, online. Like, I didn't know what to think of you because you're like, well, I, you're the National Socialist Party. You're saying like that. And so I was like, oh, you know. And I almost, like, wrote you off because I was like, oh, socialist, you know. <laughs> and But then, you know, you and I are like, you know, we're, like, so close because we agree on so many more things then we disagree, you know, and I mean, you're like one of my favorites. Like I'm, I'm like pounding the mods all the time. Bring it back, bring it back. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's like I never would have thought, you know, that, geez, I'd have so much in common with someone who said they were a socialist, you know, because it's just, it's so alien to me, you know, that concept. So, I mean, you know, or Daybreaker, for example, like, you know, he's, he's pretty much, you know, liberal Democrat. But even he, in the past couple of months, has been kind of like, you know what, I'd, I'd vote for Jill Stein. You know, I'd vote for Gary Johnson. And he's just very, you know, he may not agree with us on a lot of things, and I know he doesn't because he feels like there's no fail-safe for the weak and the poor, and he's just got a huge heart, you know. And and I get that that um, that concern that a lot of people have, you know, that they don't want to trade what they feel is their heart and humanity for more freedom, right? But yeah. there there may be some kind of common ground to reach out, and if we just kind of find it, and may, maybe it would be people like Brandon who would say, we'll try this or try that, because I'm not one of those, you know, I hate the poor. I think the poor are this and that, you know, because I've been poor. You know, I'm, you know, I just think there are better ways of doing it than, than an ineffectual government, you know. And if we found some talking points to reach across, because really I, now more than ever I feel it's us versus them. Them. I don't okay. feel like it's, you know, I mean, they're the them now to me. <laughs> so it's the Uniparty and the rest of us. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think that's the beauty of libertarianism, though. I mean, we have a lot in common with the, you know, socialist on a lot of policies or you know, an anarchist on other parties and, a, you know, a fiscal conservative on other, other issues. So we, ha- we do have a lot of common ground with a lot of different, you know, perspectives on the way <laughs> government should be run. Maybe not everything, but we do have a lot of common ground with multiple branches of philosophy on the way government should be run. And honestly, I can't see how anybody from almost any branch of philosophy on the way government should be would agree with the Republican or the Democrat Party. I don't see how anybody could. I see nothing positive about them from any perspective whatsoever. And the debate was so fucking boring because they they, they agreed with each other on pretty much everything except, you know, taxes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I mean, how much do they disagree on taxes? Anyway? I mean, you know what I mean? They're not even that far apart on taxes. 
know? Republicans really are Democrats. Not. That's what I'm saying. I, I basically summed up. I mean, the very okay. minimal. Um, okay, well, <clears throat> after the uh, the last debate, I, I was uh, talking to my parents about it, and they were, you know, going on about, um, you know, this and that, and Obama sucks, and Romney's so great, and blah, blah, blah. And um, we actually went up to uh, some friends of ours that go to my parents' church. And uh, we were sitting down. They're good people. And uh, we were talking about, because Fox News was airing on their TV, and we were sitting around in their living room. And uh, Fox was going on about the debate as normal, and they just muted it. And, and uh, uh, I saw the perfect inward because uh, the uh, the dad of the family, David, he's a good guy. He, uh, he stepped out and he was like, you know, I've just been so tired of this election. And he's like, you know, I'm voting for Romney, but I don't even like him. And I was like, you know, well, <laughs> I made my choice. He said, well, what was your choice? And I said, I'm voting for Gary Johnson. And he's like, but isn't the, don't you see that it's a vote for uh, Obama? And I was like, you know, well, no. I hate when people Johnson. say that. Carry on. It's irritating. And, uh, but, you know, he was like, you know, I, I told him, I said, you know, you want to vote for Romney, but have you really looked into it? And he was just like, you know, well, to be honest, no, I haven't. I just want it to be over with. And I was like, well, you know, if you listen to the debate, what they basically were doing was Obama said, this is what I think we should do, and Romney said, I agree, but it'll end up differently if I do it. And uh, <laughs> he kind of... That's about ridiculous. That. Yeah, but yeah, I, think by right. the end of, I think by the end of the conversation, I kind of had them going toward my way a little bit. and But it, it, goes, it kind of goes back to that thing that, you know, you were saying earlier about, you know, being friendly with people and not kind of coming out as this, you know, kind of weird outsider, you know, Gingrich Moon-based type of person, and instead coming across as more of a, you know, I'm your best friend, I want what's best for you and me and everybody. Right. I don't just want to, you know, sit there and say, you know, well, fuck the system. I'm going to do it my way. I want to be, you know, what's best for everybody. Right. Right, and yeah, for Johnson but this time, but he's but he's you planted a seed, so it yeah. it may not pan out this election, but but you never know. Yeah, it's true. I have a I friend it, that I'm sorry, gone. No, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry about no, that. I had a friend, and I I was talking to her because she was like a diehard Republican. And, you know, and, and we go to the same church, and she was like, well, how come, how, you know, and it's, see, and, and the thing is, Catholics, this is a hold your nose for them, because they hate Mormons, like, you have no idea. And so a lot of Catholics, you know, not black rock or anything, but a lot of them are having a hard time with this, and, and I know evangelicals, too, because he's, a Mormon, right? And so, you know, she was talking to me. She goes, I don't really want to vote in the Mormon because, you know, this and this, this and this. And, and you know, and, and she goes, but I can't vote for Obama. And I said, well, you could just do a no vote. And she's like, you know, no vote. And I said, just vote for Gary Johnson. I said, it's your way of saying no. I don't like either one. And I wish I'd thought about this a long time ago because now she's doing it. Because she's like, you know, you're because I can't stand, you know, Mitt Romney. And I thought, damn it, you know, we should have just vote no. Um, and then put on the back, vote for Gary Johnson. Um, because, I mean, people just they don't, you know, it's, it's one thing to say, well, I'm going to vote for Gary Johnson. You know, and then people say, well, that vote goes to Obama. But if you say what they really feel, because they don't know Gary Johnson. They're not morally, emotionally, intellectually invested in him, right? You know, the average person. If you sure. say, just, just say no. And and that's you and I touched on this the other night, but I, I know that Max doesn't want me to now. But there there are certain words, certain key phrases, certain things that are embedded in our brains that we hear them and they click and something turns on. And that whole just say no, it was so simple and it was you know, I mean everybody knows that. They may not know that it came from Nancy Reagan, but they know that, you know, just say no. Yeah. And so if you say just just say no, just vote no. I mean and it's almost like the hypnosis comes on, they're like, Yeah, I could just say no. So it's not a vote for Gary Johnson, and it's not a vote for Obama, but, but frame it like, just say no to these people, <laughs> you know? Exactly. Put your foot down. Yeah. You know? Right, like throw, throw a monkey wrench in. The Gary Johnson monkey wrench. Yeah, I mean, because that's, that's really, you know, all I'm, I, do I like Gary Johnson as much as Ron Paul? No, because 
Ron Paul had this layer of all shucks authenticity that I really liked. But I don't like Obama, and I don't like Romney. So I, to I'm me, I'm voting no. Yeah, I agree. Well, so, you know, to me, it's I'm voting no. <laughs> I mean, you I'm, know, I'm and, and Mike and I are... Yeah, our, right, our votes right. don't count, you know. I mean, it, if people want to say your votes don't count, like, I hate that whole thing. Well, you know, if you vote for Gary Johnson, your vote doesn't count. Well, your vote doesn't count for Romney in New York either. And your vote right. for, you know, Obama in Texas, that don't count either, you know. <laughs> so, that so, you know whoever, whoever, you know, whoever, the only vote that counts is the one who actually wins, you know. So what are you saying? Yeah. It's logical, you know. And yeah, you know what, even if I, you know, you call it whatever you want, I'm not voting for any of those fucking clowns, because find me two things where they disagree on. You know, come on, man. Yeah. Ridiculous. Oh. I can't, I can't, I, I was like, well, I've been watching the debates, especially the third one, I've literally been just disgusted. It's like, how do people not just see right through that fact that they're the same fucking guy, you know? All you got to do is have a fucking EIQ and be paying attention. It should be fucking obvious. But some people, you know, you come on, you know, the forum and the Republicans are like, yeah, victory for Ron, he killed him. And then the, you know, liberals are saying the exact same thing for their guy. And it's like, you guys realize they said the same fucking thing, right? Yeah. I mean, come on. Well, you know, there's like, okay, like, um, I mean, Don Glock, for example, like, he waxes my ass because he's so hyper-partisan, you know, like, and, and uh, there were people that I almost wrote off, right? But, like, Bruce Gear and I, like, we talk, you know, and I, I don't want to ruin his reputation for being a, a hard ass or anything. But, <laughs> but if you've noticed the way that, like, he posted me, it's, it's very different than it used to be. But, um, you know, he, he said to me, he goes, you know, I don't like Romney. And I'm not so much a Republican. He said, but he said, you know, I'd vote for a Democrat if one wasn't crazy. He said, but, you know, I just, he said, I, you know, I, I can't get with progressive policies, so I will vote for anything that's, that's not progressive. And, you know, it's, I think that there's a lot of people like him that we might also, you know, originally sort of write off and say, Ugh, you know. And, yeah. but maybe the more we talk to them in, in you know, in a one-on-one way, you know, we'll see that they're not, like, that's real, you know, like, he and I, like, we, we, Fought the whole first like I guess I guess month you know that that we knew each other online like because I don't like um I don't like lobbyists at all I think they're the problem you know and I don't like this as a, as a criminal <laughs> as as someone who who, who defends criminals I have a problem with corporations being treated as people and so you know and I know to anarchists well you know you can't. You know, you can't curb speech. You can't, you know, they have every right to do this. They have every, you know, blah, 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 and all that stuff. And I'm like, you know, and so we fought back and forth for a long time because I have this thing, well, if a corporation's people didn't find let's fucking give them a felony. Let's not make it a civil case then. Let's put every goddamn person in that corporation in jail for some of these white-collar crimes then. You know, I mean, yeah. if, that's, if that's how we're going down, baby, let's do it, you know. <laughs> let's go. I'm fine with that. I'll put the CEO behind bars. Um, yeah. But... You know, but then the more he and I started talking, and then we we sort of, you know, because I don't, I'm going to rat him out, but he was going to vote for Romney a while ago. And it came down to drug policy and, you know, and talking about that, like why, you know, because Romney's so like, you know, I'm a tough guy, I'm going to throw drug offenders in jail. And that was his touch point issue. Like, why would you hurt nonviolent people? Why would you physically, you know, hurt them and put them in jail and do this to them and do that? And so he found that one issue that said, I'm going to go this way. Yeah, no, I, I agree. For sure. I mean, because these guys, both sides of the, uh, the Democrats and Republicans are just so bad on everything. Just find, you know, one thing where somebody who, you know, identifies themselves as whatever they are really, just find that one thing that really upsets them and we could easily just get them on our side, you know? If they're not totally fixated on this lesser Tweedle garbage, you know? And, and can I see? I know I'm monopolized. I'm such a girl, but we're, we're talkers. Females are talkers. Um, but the other thing I, I thought would be an interesting thing to bring up in these, because it's, it's a touchy issue, and I always like to talk about touchy issues, but religion. Okay, so a lot of people are religious. 
You know, I mean, I, there's, or spiritual or, or something. And so one of the things that people, like, when they hear, like, an anarchist or communist, you know, and, and they think, well, they're a-religious. You cannot side with this and believe in something, or you can't. That's why I fight Kilgram so hard. I mean, I don't necessarily think the Catholic Church has done everything right, and I haven't, you know, but, but I need people to understand that not all of us are anti-religion. You know, we're not that we're for you making your own choice about it, you know, and and I think that that, that's something else that sort of has to, you know, to people need to realize that when you talk down about the religion, when you smack people's religion, Kilgram does this a lot. Um, when you say, oh, well, in a, in a ideal society, you'll be beyond religion. That scares the shit out of people because they don't want to give it up. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I think, I think know. I agree with you, Renny. Uh-huh. If you start talking about people's religion, now you're mixing the religion and the politics. They're getting confused as to what the real message is. I mean, the real message is non-aggression. That's the real message. Exactly. It doesn't matter yeah. what your religion is. Mm-hmm. I, I think, it, you know, I, I'm religious myself, and, and I run into a, into a lot of libertarians or anarchists who are anti, you can tell they're anti-religion, mm-hmm. but they, they mix it up a lot with, their, their political philosophy, and it doesn't need to be, but they, no. they send, I think they send a bad message, or an unintended yeah. message at the very least. Exactly, exactly, yeah, because like I, I hear, like I can hear them, I can hear what anybody's saying, like I understand what Kilgram's talking about, but at the same time, you know, there's a lot of things that people find value in within religion. Like I, I've sort of, I've moved on to being a spiritual person. <laughs> Um, but, you know, and I, I can't say that I go to Mass unless my mom catches me, um, you know, and says, did you go? Because it, I always, she's a Saturday person, so I can say, oh, I'm going on Sunday, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I still have a lot of respect and love for tradition, right, and, and my family. And so my family and my, my heritage and, and you know, and all that's wrapped up in it. And so uh, for somebody who's also not just has that, but is also invested in the religion itself, you sound scary when you come at them and say this stuff and that stuff. And, and we are, you know, the truth is <laughs> the progressives, we're not, we're not going to get it all. You know, the, the people like stagnant, the people like, um, you know, the S. Jeff, you know, those types of people that are hardcore, you know, Liberals, you know the 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 what's it, surfer Joe? They're they're off our radar entirely. But there are people who are, I think, conservatives, who are um, maybe libertarians, but but social democrats, right? That yeah. like daybreakers religious, you know, that we need to to make ourselves clear that that we're not anti-religion. We're not about freeing you from anything. We're about letting you. Choose what you want. You know, if you want to be one, it's great. You don't want to, don't. You know, and and sure. get that out there. And yeah. No, I agree. Like personally, I, I I'm I'm I believe in a God. I just don't believe in organized religion. You know what I mean? Exactly. And I have no exactly. problem with anybody that does at all. Honestly, but my only beef was and I, uh, that I don't want it in policy. You know what I mean? And exactly. there's some religious people that want it in policy. And the people that want it yes, in policy are never going to be able to get them to our side. You know what I mean? But the people who just yep. want the freedom to do what they wish in regards to the religion without hurting anybody else forcibly, I, I have no problem with them at all. You know? Those are the type of people. You know, you're right, there. too, because I, I picked on the progressives, but you're, you're right, because I keep forgetting, like, you know, you've got the St. Mike's and people like that who quote are libertarians. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. Oh, don't even get me started on Nemesis. <laughs> that guy, he, I think I'm the only guy he put on his ass. I really went after his ass hard once. That no, guy. he hates Brandon. <laughs> oh, he put you on his oh, ass. He's the guy that I want to invite down to Chattanooga so I can punch him in the mouth. <laughs> Man. That guy. This is not aggression <laughs> for you, right? Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but uh, there's, there's some guys on that damn site, man. I can't, like, I, I look at the computer, and I'll be like, 
like, is this guy really serious? What he's just, like, it's incredible, some of these people. Oh, my God. I know. That's why I'm always like, and you're not a libertarian. Because <laughs> they're like, you know, they keep saying they're libertarian because they've confused the small government. Fucking, fucking rise again still claims he's a damn libertarian, which is ridiculous. But, but I always say it's okay to come out of the closet and that you're a Republican. Yeah. Oh, believe what you want. Yeah. I don't care. I mean... Actually, well, they I don't want, want impose, you guys in office, but... <laughs> <laughs> but they want to impose their religion on, on people. And, you know, I, I just, I don't, I mean, and I, I think, honestly, I probably like Jesus more than they do. Um, but I don't, I don't think he would even want to be imposed on people. I mean, he was that, hey, he who has ears, let him hear. You know, it's not this, I'm going to force you <laughs> to, to do it my way. And, you know, and that's how they get. And so they're kind of a lost cause, too. I mean, they're, you know, those, those oh, hardcore those neocons. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, know, well, you know, there's just some people that, you know, see, I'll get religious people, again. you got to, like, you know, don't cast your pearls before swine. Just forget about them and, you know, just kind of, like, move on from there and, and figure out who's savable, <laughs> you know. The people in the Republican they, Party that we're not going to be able to do anything about are the, the, hawk, the hawks that want to be fucking in every country everywhere for whatever they do. They get the, the America fuck yeah and they, they buy into that shit. Those guys, my, my favorite thing ever is when they start those threads, they're like, libertarians are dot, dot, dot. <laughs> yeah. And then they have all the totally... Off the wall yeah. I love, I love these ones these people. There's a couple of them. They're like, yeah, I'm a conservative li- liberals, or you know, if you vote for Obama, you're a Marxist, whatever. You know, I'm so conservative, and then libertarians are cool. It's like, what? Really? I mean, the same liberals, you know, you know, five, ten years ago, that you know, thought George Bush was a war criminal or, or whatever, are cheering <sighs> Obama's drone strikes because he knows what's going on. It's like, really? Oh <laughs> my God! Do you think that bothers you guys? <laughs> It really ticks me off. I said, do you think that bothers you guys? It really ticks me off. Because I'm one of those who said, you know, I don't like it when he did it, and I don't like it when he does it either. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I don't get the mentality. You know, it's not okay when he does it, but it's fine when he does it. Yeah. No, there's a dude online today. What the hell is that guy's name? He's like, Obama knows what he's doing, so I support his drone strikes. I'm like... What? Johnny is out of control. He's he's a gay black man, and he and yeah. I have had a lot of talks, you know. And so he's got his two special interests, right? You know, yeah. and so and 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 so he he's like part of that, you know. He's part of the liberal matrix, or not liberal. I'm sorry, Brandon. He's part of the Democratic matrix um, of you. you know feeling like you know he has that. They're his only hope. You know, Obama is his Obi-Wan. You know, it's that you're my only hope to save me because conservatives have scared the shit out of gays and blacks. Yeah, it's true. Where yeah. It's like, but they got, you got to realize know, that most libertarians aren't them. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah like, exactly. They think we are. They yeah. think we are. I, mean, I, don't, I, I don't give a flying fuck with a gay guy. I really don't care. I mean, I have one friend who I used to go to high school with. He turned out being gay. It's great. I don't care. The faction of the Republican Party that that's crazy like that, he needs to make that distinction. Yeah. Well, we need to have an answer for the welfare thing because, and I'm not saying all blacks are welfare, but you know they do identify with other blacks who are. And so when you start, to, even if you're talking to a middle class, like this, this guy in my my office, Mike, he's the former chief prosecutor, you know, of, of Brooklyn, I mean Kings County, and you know he's he's just. Um, you know, and he, he's about as middle class as, as you could could imagine, but he has all the sympathy because you know he has a family member who is, or he has this, and so there's that that um, you know humans tend to group and they tend to cluster and, and they try to find these things. You know, we're, we're communal creatures to to a certain extent, and so when you when we have this thing where we say, well, I don't believe in welfare, they hear they hear you say it. But then they shut off because they think your argument's the same as the Republicans. Uh, you, they think that you're that those lazy good yeah. for nothing, blah 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 blah. Well, yeah. that's not well, mine at all. Gotta, mine. I think we'll, no, go ahead. Sorry. No, I mean, I because see, I grew up that way. You know, it's like um, I grew up in a neighborhood where everybody was on welfare. I mean, my parents wouldn't take it, so of course we were shit poorer than everybody else. People were stealing sneakers from me, so I'd have nothing, you know. <laughs> but I mean, it's you know, it was. 
I, I see it, and it's it's not that I, you know, don't want the poor to have money. It's not that I don't want them to have things or to have a safety net, but I it does not work. It's like the bird yeah. feeder. You know, they say, okay, come pick this up. The lady at the welfare line is not their friend. She doesn't know the name. She doesn't know this and that. She's just, you know, processing yeah. the information. The check that they get comes through the mail or the EBT card. It's, it's this impersonal, one-size-fits-all bird feeder situation where they do not help them have any kind of unique individual assistance that would actually get them out of their situation. It's just, you know, it's not that I don't want to help the poor because I have a lot of love in my heart for the poor. It's just the government is so ineffectual and corrupt because, you know, Absolutely. yeah. I mean, that's so a big we, reason we why. Well, it's like it would be, it, letting the government help the poor is like letting the government make the bread. I mean, it's going to do a crappy yeah. job. So yep. if, if you want it done right, you're going to have to do it in a way that doesn't involve force. Because when it yep. involves force, there's no, there's no feedback loop. There's no, oh, you're not doing it right, so we're going to switch to this other guy who can do it right. No. When the government does it, they do it wrong, and nobody has, can say anything about it. So quality goes down. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, yeah. and you know, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's it's the it's the focus on the individual, and and I I've talked to a lot of people like you know stagnant. She's like super liberal, and she told me one time she goes you know she said I don't she goes I don't agree with anything you say, she goes but I don't know why I don't agree with it. She said because I really like what you have to say and it's really well thought out. Yeah, which I thought was an interesting thing to say because what she's saying is that what I said it makes sense, but she's she's invested in her answer. She's been brainwashed, probably, probably by the mainstream media. Yeah, well, actually, it's kind it's, of funny. If you refer to her username, it's stagnant. And what's she doing? She's being stagnant. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Well, you know. There. But, I mean, it's kind of just that mentality. I mean, she's, she probably wasn't even thinking about it. It was just in the back of her subconscious when she made the username. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, and, and yeah. I think, too, like we have to have a, a response and be able to, to really explain non-aggression. And we have to always isolate ourselves from, and I, and I don't like this because I don't like groups, but it's almost like I have to sort of say, well, we're a group because I, don't, I need to be distinguished from Republicans because when I say I don't like welfare, they think, I think, you know, poor people are lazy and I hate poor people and poor people, you know, and, and so my argument gets attached to theirs. I don't want them to attach them. I, I get pissed off and they're like, well, I'm a libertarian. No, you're not. Who are you voting for? You know? Yeah. If you were really invested, yeah. you wouldn't be voting for that guy. So. Well, what we need to do is we need to explain why we don't and why this scenario on is screwing them up as opposed to just demonizing them like they might, you know? I think that's the thing. Right. Um, Long chat was saying we we need to really identify not identify but um, have dialogues, create dialogues, explain um, the non-aggression principle and why it works and why it's such a good thing and um, <clears throat> to other people because that that is the best way to put it. When you say non-aggression, the words itself take stuff down. It takes the tone down. You know, yeah. we believe in non-aggression. You know, you're not saying I'm a pacifist yeah. because that puts this one thing in your head that, you know, like, oh, well, I'm a wuss and I'm going to roll over. No, I'm not, yeah. you know. <laughs> My, yeah. Mine is mine, you know, but, but I'm not going to aggress on you. And that's right. our whole principle that I think if we really got that out there better, you know what I mean, in a better way that we people can relate to that. Yeah. I think so, but the big problem, yeah, again, yeah. is the, the fear-mongering, you know what I mean? On certain issues, they try to scare people, you know, and it works for whatever reason. Oh, somebody's in New York. Yeah, Speaking of fear-mongering, 